Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back here with Dora Kirame. Exciting to have her here again. She's a performance coach and so much more author, friend, you name it. <laughs> Please say hello if you don't mind and introduce yourself to everyone to start. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Dora Kirame, and I'm the founder of Dora Kirame Incorporation. It's a New York based company that offers coaching services. And I work with athletes, professionals, teams, and anyone who seeks fulfillment and well-being in their mind, body, and spirit. And my effective training programs are de designed to reduce stress, successfully manage internal and life balance, and maximize performance. Beautiful. So clearly you're a writer, performance coach, athlete. Would you mind discussing that a little bit as well before we get started? Oh, absolutely. So uh, where shall I start? So I'm um, I'm an athlete as well. I'm a table tennis professional and I played for the Hungarian table tennis national team for six years and won European championship uh, in my uh, age group in teams. I was also a top player under age 18 in Europe and also top 10 in the US as well. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Yes. Yeah, so, and I also, uh, I also published a couple of books as well um, on uh, mental toughness and uh, the books are Get Your Game Face On, Get Your Game Face On Like the Pros and My Stories, or, uh, my stories of Mental Toughness on and Off the Table. Perfect. And uh, yes, and my background is in psychology and sports psychology. I have two master's degrees as well. Great. And last time we discussed uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, what it's like to work with teams in a sense, right? And uh, today I think we're going to talk a little bit about the stress, the stress of it all. And how can we really learn to handle stress like the pros do and uh, the importance of well-being? So also want to point out DoraCurame.com. That's her website, D-O-R-A-K-U-R-I-M-A-Y.com. Uh, would you like to share your phone number or email address as well? Oh, absolutely. So my email address is dora at d-o-r-a-k-u-r-i-m-a-y dot com. And my phone number is 347-849-1563. Perfect. Also, you do a lot of keynote speaking. I want to point out in engagements and mental health uh, must be one of the biggest things and stress and, and coping, right? And it is Mental yes. Health Awareness Month uh, for this month. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. So um, this month is about mental health awareness. So it's very important to know the symptoms if anyone dealing with any um, mental um, stress uh, symptoms and also uh, just knowing the symptoms are very important. So this month is about also building um, awareness about this and also educating people. So whoever recognizes the symptoms they know what to do and um, basically um, rather focusing more on the their self-care routines or, or they can also ask help from professionals. And I also, I mean, I can also share some statistics because many people are not even aware of this. So, uh, for example, one, one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year and less than half of them receive treatment. Um, also, there are some other statistics that one in 20 US adults experience a serious mental illness e each year and less than two thirds receive treatment. And also one in six US youth experience a mental health condition, condition each year and only half of them receive treatment. And also these 50% um, of lifetimes mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 25. So it's very early. And, and that's why that the average delay between the onset of mental illness symptoms and the treatment is 11 years. So there, there, there's a lot to do and, um, and education is super important and just recognizing the symptoms because all these things are preventable. So it can be a pre prevention is key here. 
Wow. And uh, to all those, you know, suffering, it's just a hard thing. And mm-hmm. I honestly want to say that I feel mental health and well-being has been talked about so much more, especially after the pandemic. And I feel like it's a yes. lot more acceptable. A lot of people have been private about it, you know, uncomfortable to talk about it. But I love how the pandemic has really, I think, brought it out in us to, to talk about it and say, it's okay to not be well mentally. So many of us are suffering. So I just want to bring up that aspect of the pandemic. There is some good that comes out of it. So you say one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year, and now yeah. less than half of them receive treatment. So mm-hmm. stress management could really be helpful. I mean, there's a lot of us that suffer with this. Can you talk a little bit about what that process is and, uh, you know, what exactly is stress and how can we <laughs> go about handling it? Yeah, so stress, stress is a normal phenomenon in our everyday life. And it's the body's neutral reaction in response to physical, mental, or emotional pressure. And it's subjective how we react to stress because the same stimulus can cause different responses in different people. So it's very important how I said the first step is always awareness just to know that um, how we are interpreting a, a situation, how much stress we experience. And the same situation can cause uh, uh, can affect people differently. So we have to just accept these things. Oh, how sad. But stress is something, if we could learn to cope with it better, clearly, I think less people would be affected, but it's always not that easy. So could we talk about a normal stress reaction and kind of go over what that looks like? Yes. So um, there are three stages of uh, stress reaction. The first one is um a fight or flight. The second one is adaptation and the third one is regeneration. So to demonstrate this, let's go back to prehistoric time and imagine that a tiger or a lion is coming and a caveman is just noticing that the tiger is coming. This is the first stage of the normal stress reaction Mm -hmm. and it's called the fight or fight, uh, fight or flight reaction. So when the tiger or the lion is going toward the caveman, the caveman has a fight or flight reaction and he can start running or go against the animal. <laughs> That's going to be the second stage, which is called adaptation, in case the caveman starts running, hopefully. And the third stage is when the caveman needs to rest. He needs to rest out his bloody escape. So this is the regeneration phase, or also called relaxation. And this is what the normal stress reaction look like. And the same thing is happening in our everyday life, but we don't have lions or tigers on the street, but we have deadlines for phones, workload and other stressors. And especially during the pandemic, um, it got way more also highlight, um, you know, the stressors change for, for sure. And isolation was also a big stressor. Wow. And uh, you say, you know, stress, um, is it always bad for us or can stress really be good? Because we need that reaction response sometimes, right? How, how does that work? Could you share? Yeah. So, so stress is not a bad thing. And that's why it's so important how we react to it. Is it a fight or flight uh, response? So stress is normal. It's, and, and it's n- not all stress is bad because everyone has an optimal energy level. And the goal is to keep your optimal energy level and uh, why many people believe that the term of stress describes a negative situation, the chemicals can also give you energy and strength. So uh, I'm sure everyone, everyone experienced when, when you're not nervous at all, you're not going to do that while well. you're not challenged, but you're too nervous, that's also not good. So you want to find some balance. And also, uh, actually, there are two different kinds of stress. One of them is the eustress, mm. and the other one is the de-stress. Ah, didn't realize so, that. Okay. So eustress is a good type of stress that works as a motivator. You stress makes you feel excited about the challenge and uh, also seen uh, as an incentive to get things done. You, so uh, feeling pumped up can promote the release of endorphins and makes you happier and more energized. Why there is this stress when the strength, stress becomes too much to cope with and it's identified as as bad stress. Um, So it's called distress. And the the challenges no longer seem to be fun and there seem to be no end in sight. So continue struggling with too much stress can cause uh, exhaust your energy and drive and you experience fatigue and exhaustion. And the worst case um, 
scenario is burnout. And let me ask you to to define stress, if you don't mind, because there are also quite a few different forms of stress in general, right, Dora? Yes. So there are different kind of forms of stress. So there is acute stress, which is a short term stress. Um, And um, there is also chronic stress, which is a long term stress. And um, acute stress, um, I give you some examples. So when somebody is, 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 is in a traffic jam or uh, having a, a job interview or giving a presentation or, or having a, getting a speeding ticket or any kind of tickets or any argument with people, your spas or criticism from colleagues or boss. So uh, this is a single episode of acute stress and generally doesn't cause problems for, for healthy people. So uh, there are short, short-term symptoms such as, um, I, I mean, there are physical, mental, and emotional symptoms. So um, everyone experiences these kind of stress. Uh, you, feel your, uh, you feel a rapid heartbeat, shallow breathing, dry mouth, um, um, and sweating, right? So uh, these are the physical symptoms. And also uh, people might feel nervous and yeah. very, uh, stressed out and irritated and 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 also um there there can be concentration problems so this is a short-term stress and okay every uh, people are uh, bouncing back quickly um so that's and, and it's 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 part of our everyday life but there is chronic stress which means long-term stress so example for for chronic stress when someone has uh, having any financial stress or work-related stress, marital problems, divorce, academic pressure, caregiving, moving to a new home, getting married, chronic injury. Uh, so it's a long-term stress and, and, and can cause uh, the same symptoms as short-term stress, but also it's happening a longer period of time. And um, we can recognize chronic stress when, when the person's habit is changing. For example, the person person starts smoking again, or gets isolated, or starts behaving differently, and uh, it's 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 very important to to recognize that. Also, um, there there might be a change in even social behavior as well. How I said, um, uh, the person can can get more isolated, and um, and also the communication style can change, and um, the empathy and tolerance uh, decreases, and there might be more conflicts. And in the last, when 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 long term uh, stress uh, is happening, so chronic chronic st- stress is happening for five ten years. That's when someone is going to experience burnout. And uh, the signs of burnout is is is, for example, someone become very critical and. Um, more critical than before, and uh, emotions feels blunted, and there is more again isolation, irritability, or even frequent uh, illness. So um, there, there there are difference in 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 the mental, physical, and emotional um, coping skills, and uh, it's very important to to recognize this and and also especially in New York everyone is working so hard right I mean other parts of the world as yeah. well but but and there are so many stressors so and uh, and and it's important to recognize when somebody has a burnout and uh, I also have to say uh, people are more have a more tendency tendency to have burnout um, jobs that anyone who sacrifices themselves for a long period of time, um, they, they have a higher risk of burnout as well. So it's just good to be aware of these. And burnout is one of those things, right? Where burnout becomes like, uh, if you're overworking at a job or doing something too much repetitive, it's mm-hmm. like a lot of people in the medical field suffered with that type of stress over the pandemic. Yes. Right. And exactly. I'm sure you've worked with a lot of people with burnout that, that that's just gotta be so hard mentally draining on someone, especially during the pandemic. I think a lot of people suffered with that. Yeah. So, um, and I can also tie it back here, uh, what's really important, the, the recovery phase, the, okay. the regeneration, but because there is only a fight or flight reaction. And after there is the coping skills, the adaptation part, right? 
but if there is no recovery that's when 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 burnout happens and Got how it. i said yeah so it's 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 important and and we talked about before what you can do with that it's also the same you want to uh decrease uh the stressors and increase the resources right yeah. and the increasing the resources means that also you are having time off sometimes so All you're right. taking a break well. so let's talk specifically what we could do about it i know uh you talk about reframing the mind and how can we we do this process to you know recreate a better um mind and mental health well-being yeah so um reframing is 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 very important so uh your thoughts affecting how you feel and uh negative thoughts can affect you in a negative way so reframing your thoughts are crucial and um uh it, it's very very important to identify automatic thoughts and replace them with more balanced thoughts and um there is a call uh, there is a technique to do that it's called cbt it's a cognitive uh, behavior um therapy um that basically you're just identifying the situations when you are having uh, automatic negative thoughts and um and uh you're replacing uh them with with positive ones it's also a good question to ask is when you are in a situation it's very stressful for you and you're i don't you're recognizing you always negative in those situation is that is there another way to look at this situation that's a very good question um to ask and um and um just going back to to give you an analogy uh, and and the listeners how cbt look like so your 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 how i said if you have negative thoughts it's great um uh, um negative emotions right yeah. so reframing is to imagine looking through the the frame of the camera lens you can also look in that way so the picture seen through the lens can be changed to a view that is closer or further away and by slightly changing what is seen in the camera the picture is both viewed and experienced differently so let me give you an example here sure. so uh for example a woman is 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 upset who 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 uh so for example she she wasn't chosen for promotion she she can think about uh the positive things that could come from not be, being promoted i know it's very it can be very frustrating but also she can um look uh, in a in a new way for example she can know that new additional stress would have come from from that promotion so um and another role can be can be a better uh, fit for her for for her long term career goal so um that's just an just an example uh here well we like examples <laughs> continue <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good so we got to we got to learn you got to yes. relate no absolutely yes. and also for example if someone is getting a ticket by uh because he was texting why uh driving uh, or speeding driving yes or it's driving speeding mm -hmm. it can be very frustrating but on the other hand it can be viewed as as well that not to do it again in the future and prevent accidents right so yeah. uh it's a change of view how you look at uh situations got it so yeah. is there another way really to look at the situation yes and 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 also uh, uh and i'm going back here and tying back to social support and uh looking for help even if you're talking with with someone um even with a friend actually can help or colleagues just talk talk uh talk through different situations because even connecting with others helps and um just just talking about it and also uh the other person can help you to give you a different perspective on it as well and of course you can talk about with professionals as well uh that's another level uh but just just connecting with other people and and asking for help is also very uh helpful just uh, asking for their point of view as well good well let's talk about some ways we can help benefit and we could get through the stress together what about healthy habits in a sense and sticking with them yes i mean 
I, I, I know that everyone knows what to do, right? The, the hard part is to do it. But yes, choosing healthy habits and stick with them. It's, it's very important when, when someone is experiencing high level of stress. So focus on what you can control daily and create healthy routines. So everyone, how I said, has an optimal energy level when you can perform and, and feel the best. Um, and sleeping, sleeping is very, very helpful. And uh, you want to uh, create healthy sleeping routines um, because it's, it's, it's affecting um, how much stress you will experience and how you cope with stress. Also, eating healthy is very important. And, um, um, and, and also hydration is, is, is super uh, important as well. Um, so just just paying attention to your sleeping, eating, and hydration uh, routine are very important and can help you to cope with stress in general. We all need a little help with, right? For sure. <laughs> uh, what about being proactive, uh, you know, and being open and willing to look for help and ask for help in a sense? Yeah, so the hard part, and I'm sure everyone can relate to it, sometimes it's difficult to ask for help because we think that we are the only one who is experiencing that. But everyone is going through that and, and it's very important to be proactive and look for support. And how I said that even just um, talk to someone uh, who will listen to your frustration uh, will help you to remain positive. To connect with others and talk to others. Got yes. it. And what other advice do you have for us to handle to manage stress? Um, <laughs> you know, for example, is it also, you know, working with people, being mindful? Maybe mindfulness is another technique, right? Yes, mindfulness is 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 a is a great technique. Mindfulness is the awareness that arises from paying attention to the present moment without the resistance. So you strive and move forward the moment you wholeheartedly accept the way you are. So accept, acknowledge your feelings and name them to help you to really stress, uh, will help you to, to um, move on. And, and um, mindfulness techniques are breathing exercises. So even just if you are just take, you take one minute and you start focusing on your breathing and nothing else and how you feel, um, it will help you understand and also feel how you feel without any judgment. It's super helpful and um, it's, 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 it's helping to manage stress. Got it. Um, definitely. And other, other routines such as meditation are super helpful and uh, also yoga. Um, these are all mindfulness uh, exercises and, and helps you to build uh, the awareness and, and also connecting with yourself. What about um, journaling, writing <laughs> your thoughts down? How does that factor in? Yeah, so handwriting is very helpful. I know nowadays uh, the young generation is, is, is not really doing that. Yeah, they but, don't even uh, learn how to write script in school, Dora. Yes, yes I know, I know. It's uh, crazy. So uh, for this is for the older generation, but just in general, in journaling is, is very good. So if somebody is, is still have uh, pens and can write, I would recommend um, the handwriting as well because it creates certain chemicals in your brain, which is good for you. And um, research has shown that handwriting is better for you than writing on your keyboard or laptop. Although I know it's it's a little old school. Um, I but, like uh, it. It's more engraved. <laughs> if you're writing it, it's like it sets in your head a little bit, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, we also talked about it before, but again, just reminding um, everyone that writing down what you're grateful for, uh, what you are grateful for, super helpful. You can put it on your phone and the root of joy is gratefulness. So um, it helps you to channel your thoughts on what matters to you and to stay positive. And, and there are a couple of apps that can be very helpful for you. For example, uh, gratitude, daily journal and the five minute journal, just to mention few, but everyone can do some more research or even just writing down those on your phone. It's, 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 it's very helpful. And uh, I would also suggest that um, to write down three 
uh, things um, at the end of each day that you are helpful for. Um, and it, it, it has many benef uh, uh, good effects. And even some, some families do that at the dinner that you have to say three um, um, things that was positive in your day. So that can be also um, a good thing to do for the, the family. And also you learn more about how was uh, your family member's day. So that's a good way to have it um, um, do that at dinner. And uh, the other way is also what it, it's good to do that tell the people in your life how much we appreciate them. Everyone likes to know that they are appreciated and uh, their positive reactions can help put you in a positive mood too. So that's also very good. And lastly, well, writing down your goals are again, very important. And so let's talk about some of the services that you offer that can help people with stress. Yeah, so I, I do individual uh, consultations. So anyone who would like to work on their stress management skills can um, reach me at um, Dora at DoraKermay.com or call me at 347-849-1563 um, and uh, we can set up an appointment. And uh, so I do individual um, um, sessions. I also do group sessions. And I also give keynote speaking engagement as well for companies. I've done a couple of those. Great. And also just to remind everyone to get in touch with you, Dora, could you share uh, the best form in all forms of contact? Oh, absolutely. So uh, my email address is dora at dorakurimay.com. My phone number is 347-849-1563. And my website is www.dorakurimay.com. Now, um, glo globally, I know you've been on the, the forefront with ExxonMobil, UPS Europe. Uh, then uh, take it to another level, individuals, <laughs> high school students. And uh, you work with a lot of different types of people, from businesses to individuals and young, and young people as well. Yes. So, um, yes, I, I work with uh, individuals, young people, and uh, also big companies, how you mentioned. And, um, yes, it's great for everyone. Um, so I recommend it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dora Kirame. Exciting to have you here, performance coach. Exciting to be back, uh, as always. And anything else you want to share before we go? We still have two minutes left, hon. Um. Well, I mean, um, how I said, awareness is the first step. So I would highly recommend um, everyone, whoever is experiencing any kind of stress, the first step is knowing what are the, the, the situations when you are experiencing stress and what you are feeling. And, uh, and that would be the first step. Then, then you can start doing rather self-care routine or also ask uh, help from a professional um, we talked about that almost everyone is, is experiencing uh, these symptoms and, and everyone is dealing with it. So it's, it's, it's totally normal, our everyday life. And just little adjustments can make a huge difference. And right. prevention is key here. And uh, because if you're waiting and not doing anything, yeah. uh, can cause a big problem. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Dora Kirame. You have a fantastic day. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And thank you for joining us again. And looking forward to the next time we speak. Have a great day, hon. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. 
day-to-day -day simple task can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.